some more mud because it's pretty buffed right now. I think I used about five bags so far. Let's see. Welcome back to the channel guys, Donnie D here. So continuation with this series on this Krillis shower. If you watch the last video, maybe I'll put that up in the uh, corner there. But um, all the ledgers is in there, everything's prepped, ready to go. So now I'm just gonna be doing the mud part. Now this part, <clears throat> as easy as it may look, it's definitely, you know, acquired skill. You could compare it to like, you know, guys can hang drywall, but they don't know how to finish drywall. They're not good at it. So same thing with mud here. Um, it's definitely an acquired skill. It takes time. I've just been doing it over the years. I don't do it every day. You know, I just do it basically on shower basis. So every time I do a shower, I do this, but you know, it takes some time to learn how to work with the mud and all that stuff. So anyway, I'm going to show you how I'm going to go along doing this. You know, I already have a slurry coat on the slab there, if you've seen in the, uh, in the previous video. Slurry coat is on there. I spread the mud and make sure you cover all that before, it, you know, the thin set skin's over. Then I'm just going to fill this thing in, and then when I, when I work with mud, I like to pack it down pretty tight. Some guys say you don't have to pack it down tight. Well, you do. That's how you get the strength that it packs it. You don't want to be sitting hitting, hitting one spot for a 10 minutes straight, but each section gets about you know a two to four wax with the I like to use a wood float to move it around and then pack it down. So that's that. I'll show you how I go about doing this. I like to use multiple different size straight edges to get to the exact length I need to get a nice proper screed. Some guys use sticks or whatever they have laying around. In my opinion, it's not accurate. If you get the proper tools for the job, it's just going to work that much better. So I have aluminum screeds from 10 feet all the way down to a foot or less. So most projects, I usually have the you know the right size screed for it. And they're just aluminum box screeds. You get them on most pile suppliers. You're not going to be able just to go to your box store and get these things. Again, if you're a DIY person watching this, you can make a stick, you know, and cut a few different from the sides for the size you need, and that will work fine. Just, just make sure that they're dead straight, you know, put them up, put the sides up to a level and make sure they're straight, and that will work if you're only doing this once or twice, you know. If you're doing this for a living, you're a pro like myself, you definitely want to invest in tools, but I'm going to show you how I go about doing this here. Okay, so once I got my mud in there, I'm going to move it around. Now, when you, when you do this and you pack it down, you, I mean, this, this might sound obvious to, to a pro if you're watching this, but for if you're a DIY person watching this, you want to make sure your mud's anywhere from a half inch to an inch above the level that you actually need for it to finish at. Because as you pack down this mud here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to compact on itself and it's going to get a lot more dense. So you want... That area to be able to pack down if you put it too low and you start packing and it's below the level that you need to finish it at then what the problem is you're gonna have to dig it out so anytime you work with mud it kind of works as one if you pack it down it's too low you don't want to just take more mud and throw it on top because that top layer is already packed down tight and it won't bond to each other so you want to basically remove that section with your hands dig it up at least a few inches around the whole section that's low and then repack it with some mud so as you can see now i got this small section i like to work in small sections whatever you consider that for me this is a small section that i pack down and i basically i work the straight edge back and forth i'm not trying to scrape it off in one shot when i first started doing this I, I would have it too much mud in there and then i'll be trying to scrape too hard and end up pushing down your scrape points on the drain or on the wall here it's hard to do since you ha i have it fastened to the wall but if you're using mud as your straight edge to scrape to and you did that with a level going around your straight edges and that's your point you got to scrape to you hop will happen and you'll dig into it so how I like to do it is I just read off a little at a time. I just keep pulling and going back and forth and work it slowly. Don't try to, like I said, pull off in one shot. It's just not going to happen. It's going to come out bad. So I just slowly work around, check my work, I clean up the straight edge every so often. 
I put it down the sections that ready to read. Make sure I don't have any low spots. And you should, as long as you stay on your perimeter spots and you don't bump off those, it's gonna hold that shredge right exactly what you, where you need it. You just gotta take your time going around to get everything exactly where it needs to be. So this is just, you know, mud work in, in a sense, it's not difficult you know the theory of it but it, it's a skill it's a, it really is a skill and, and it's hard to exactly know how to do it unless you do on a project so i can tell you as much as i can now if you're a white person no nope, you know doing this just really prep everything and take whatever i'm saying here because you're going to run into what i'm saying so again i just pack it down my wood float going around street off small sections at a time and if you see here i'm just I got another shredge and I'm basically working that back section so I go and I work around it so I'm going to continue doing that through the whole project it's the same process going around little by little you screwed it. Okay, now that I got everything screeded out, I'm just taking my flat metal trowel here. I'm just scooping off any excess around the perimeter because you're going to have that. And then what I like to do, I take my wood flow here, so I'm going gonna, gonna to scrape it off. Make sure it's somewhat clean. If you have any dry parts on there, it's just going to dig into the mud and check all your trowels. You know, it's funny that I'm saying that because the job I just actually did right now. And this, this project I, I did at the time was in January, but right now I'm recording this in November of uh, 2022. And uh, I had a little bit of old mud dried on my metal trail and every time I would go. Okay, starting over, can't control when the phone rings. But anyway, you know, the metal trail had a little bit of debris on there, old mud or things that are summer time was trying to finish off the mud. It was digging into it. So always make sure your bottom of your trowels are nice and clean. So. What I'm doing now, I'm just taking the wood float. Yeah, the wood I'm, I'm not pressing yes. very hard at all. I'm, I'm just floating over, feeling for any humps or dips and try to just smooth out everything. That way everything looks nice and, and feels good when someone's standing on it. You don't want any humps and you don't want any dips, which there shouldn't be, but there could be. So the wood float is just, it's gonna be your way to tell where, what's going on here. So basically I'm just going around, I'm smoothing out anything and I'm filling it, filling in any imperfections in the mud as I do it. It's, it's a really great way to do it. Some guys like a magnesium flow, there's a few different way, you know, things to do here. But again, I'm not pressing hard. If you press hard, you're actually gonna take the mud off the surface and that's the last thing you wanna do. So I'm just floating around, filling in these spots. Once that's done, I'll show you the next step, what I did. That's pretty good. Move out my trowel, then I'll do the uh, recess part around the drain. Just spray the bottle of water, finish the edges, and then do around. Okay, next step. Now, this is the final finish, pretty much, um, of the mortar bed here. Some guys like a magnesium flow again. I like to finish it with a nice steel trowel. I'm not trying to make it a mirror finish here. I'm just trying to close the pores on the mud. So all I'm doing, I'm just taking the flat trowel and I'm just closing them, going in both directions. If you don't do this, which I had it way back in the past, and the next day what happens is the mud will not, will, the top surface will just start breaking off like nothing. So it's, this step is very important. You really just want to, Take your metal trowel and just run it across each section a few times to 
make sure the whole surface is closed and bonded together. And by using this, the, uh, the spray bottle there, and I just have water in it, I just miss the whole entire surface. It really locks any and anything that's on the surface that's not bonded that well. It'll kind of bond it back to each other. So that's all I'm doing. I'm going across the whole area, making sure that's solid. And then I'll show you the next part. All right, so you got a scrap piece of beach right here. Mark where I have the street, right about the thickness of it. Okay, so using a plastic jig worked out pretty good. Now I was doing the same process. I'm just going back around the edges where I, I did a screed with the wood float, making sure everything is filled in and nice and smooth. Once I get that done, I'll hit it that area with the metal trowel, and that area is good to go. Okay, that is done. Recessed around the lip there, the vitra, vitra heat membrane. I used about, I mixed six, but I used about five, let me see. Yeah. I mixed five bags, used about five, well, six bags, used about five and a quarter for this. So that's that. There you go.